In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. A hearty welcome to each one of you, my dear sisters and brothers, wherever you are. Hearty welcome to this family of prayer, family of faith, as we pray together on this the 27th Sunday of the liturgical year. I want to particularly say hello to the sisters in their convents. Many of you are watching this Mass, I know, because the churches are not yet fully opened. Uh, the fathers, some of the fathers, unable to open the parishes attending this Mass. Thank you for participating. Joy, privilege to be with you. And in a very special way, all our families in your homes. Your home has become a little chapel, little church where we offer this Mass. Today is Thanksgiving Day, and so Thanksgiving in the Archdiocese of Bombay and in the Archdiocese of Amravati. The thanksgiving to God for all the good that he did and to us. We get a chance to thank God, opportunity to thank God for having preserved us from the corona and all the good gifts. For the special greetings to the East Indian community, the little community, many original inhabitants of this island city, it's the Agera. Uh, Happy feast, God's blessings. It's like the harvest festival many people have. Kerala, Tamil Nadu, here in Maharashtra, in Bombay city, uh, it's the Agera for the East Indians. All, the, all of you participating in this Mass, happy Agera, God's blessing, we pray for each other. And now we begin this Eucharist, thanking God for everything, putting ourselves in His presence and saying, I confess, I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God. And, and to you, you my brothers and sisters, that I have grievously sinned, sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what, what I've done, what I've failed to do, through my through fault, through my, my fault, through my, my most grievous fault. fault. Therefore, Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, of a Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers, brothers and sisters, to pray, to pray for me, for me to, the, to the Lord our God. God. May Almighty God have mercy on us. May you forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. We praise God on this day of the Lord by singing the Gloria. Take away. 
ever-living God who in the abundance of your kindness surpass the merits and the desires of those who entreat you pour out your mercy upon us to pardon what conscience dreads and to give what prayer does not dare to ask through our Lord Jesus Christ your son who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord God said, It is not good that the man should be alone. I will make him a helper fit for him. Now out of the ground the Lord God had formed every beast of the field and every bird of the heavens and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whenever the man, and whatever the man called every living creature that, wa that was its name. The man gave names to all livestock and to the birds of the heavens and to every beast of the field. But for Adam there was not found a, a helper fit for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and while he slept took one of his ribs and closed up its place with flesh and the ribs that the Lord God and the rib that the Lord God had taken from the man he made into a woman and brought her to the man then the man said this at last is bone of my bones and flesh of my flesh she shall be called woman, because she was taken out of man. Therefore a man shall leave his father and his mother, and hold fast to his wife, and they shall become one flesh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response will be...
reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Brethren, we see him who for a little while was made lower than the angels, namely Jesus, crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. For it was fitting that he for whom and by whom all things exist in bringing many sons to glory should make the founder of their salvation perfect through suffering. For he who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one source. That is why he is not ashamed to call them brothers. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly stand for the gospel. be with you and with your spirit a reading from the holy gospel according to mark glory to you o lord at that time some pharisees came up and in order to test jesus asked is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife he answered them what did Moses command you they said Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of divorce and to send her away and Jesus said to them because of your hardness of heart he wrote you this commandment but from the beginning of creation God made them male and female. Therefore a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two but one flesh. What therefore God has joined together let not man separate. In the house the disciples asked him again about this matter and he said to them whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her and if she divorces her husband and marries another she commits adultery and they were bringing children to him that he might touch them the disciples rebuked them when Jesus saw it, he was indignant and said to them, Let the children come to me, do not hinder them. For to such 
belongs the kingdom of heaven. Truly I say to you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God like a child shall not enter it. And he took them in his arms and he blessed them, laying his hands on them. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear brothers and sisters, we are continuing our journey, life's journey, spiritual journey, every Sunday, reading and reflecting on the Gospel of Mark. And today's Gospel passage from Mark chapter 10 is all about family life the necessity for unity in the family, necessity for fidelity in the family, and also the latter part for children. Family does not get complete unless there are children. Unless God gives children. And then the, the care of children also. Jesus puts them up as a model for entering the kingdom of heaven. The passage begins by saying that the Pharisees came to test Jesus. To lay, the word used is to lay a trap with him. What is the trap? I mean, they were not sincere in asking him uh, this question about divorce, whether it's okay, not okay. They were, Moses said in Deuteronomy, had said, a man can give a writ of divorce to his wife. One possibility is, you see, at that time, John the Baptist had just been executed, decapitated, because he had challenged Herod and told him, it was not right for you to take your brother Philip's wife, not right for you to take another man's wife. And uh, she never forgave him, the wife of uh, Philip, and she asked for his head on a platter and he was executed. So possibly they were hoping that Jesus also would make a mistake like that, not a mistake, say that and uh, get into trouble and perhaps also be imprisoned. That's one possibility. But the other possibility also because there was a controversy at the time on the interpretations of uh, this whole question of uh, Deuteronomy which said that uh, a man can divorce his wife. There were two schools of thought at the time when Jesus was young. Rabbi Hillel, Rabbi Shammai. Now, the first one, the first school was very liberal. The second one was more strict. Second school said that only for adultery can you divorce your wife. She commits adultery. And this uh, interpretation affected civil law in India also for a long time. The divorce for Christians could be given only on the grounds of adultery. As far as the other school of thought, Hillel's school of thought said, a man could divo divorce his wife, divorce his wife, for any reason if she, can you believe it, does not cook well, if she's very... Uh, criticizes his relatives and so on and uh, for that so they were, it was a liberal school and a strict school and maybe they also wanted to see which school Jesus side but Jesus went beyond as always he went to the root and said any divorce is wrong there is no divorce uh, and that's the teaching of the Catholic Church that marriage is indissoluble marriage cannot be dissolved. But it's not just a question, I'm sure all of you know that. Perhaps today we could reflect a bit on what about family life? It's not just about not separating, it's about living happily together. How does one get happiness? 
how does one get fulfillment? I'm convinced that the family is the most important unit for each one of us. It's in a family, unless you're a priest or a nun, but it's your, in a family uh, that you really build up your success, your joy, your happiness, your fulfillment. There was a survey done some years back in America of all those different types of couples, educated, uneducated, rich, not so rich, etc. And uh, I was reading the results of that survey which asked which is the one most important quality that you must have in the family, one most important element in the family for it to be successful. On the, there was also other question, what element if not present would really make a big difference in your family? And uh, I must share with you that the results were, I think now obvious, but uh, startling because the one element, the same element is present, made for success, absence, made for failure. Same element, positive, negative. And that element was communication. Communication is essential. And so for all the families, husbands, wives, parents, children, uh, I want to share this result of the survey done in America some years back, quite a number of years back, 20 years or so. I think the results are still valid today. Communication is so important for success of this relationship which uh, has got to be built between husband and wife. Communication builds trust. Communication strengthens relationship. Can communication builds up love in a family. This communication should have some qualities. Perhaps we could, I could share a few with you from my many, many years of experience in, in the tribunal before I was appointed bishop and uh, dealt with many broken marriages, very many, and saw them uh, in raw flesh, as it were. Uh, the communication has got to be honest got to build trust and therefore when you talk to your spouse there should be uh, sincerity there should be truth a communication which is dishonest which is hiding things etc breaks trust breaks confidence harms the relationship so the communication should be truthful the communication should be about serious matters not just always about the weather, about uh, the lockdown, but matters that concern you and her, your partner and your children and your parents concern you should be about serious matters. Communication is also non-verbal. Your acts of kindness, your greeting, your smile, the way you uh, treat each other at uh, dinner or at breakfast or lunch and passing things to each other, the concern. Communication is shown also in non-verbal things. And I could go on and on. But that's an important thing for us to examine. I want to share with you that once I preached about this in a parish in Bombay and uh, years ago. And after mass, uh, one parishioner came to see me in the sacristy and told me, uh, Father, what you said has touched me so much and uh, I don't know what to do. I said, what happened? He says, it, you know that uh, my husband and myself, we live in the same house, we eat at the same table, we uh, are together, but we're not talking to each other for the last six months. And I don't know how to begin. Both of us are feeling bad, but we don't talk to each other. And she added, and this will surprise you and bring a smile to your faces. And uh, she told me, he says, you know, uh, I have two daughters and they fought about something and now they have the last couple of months, they are not talking to each other. I was wondering what a queer situation in that family that uh, there are four of them perhaps at dinner table together and each one is not talking to somebody else. So they needed an effort, I would think, to remember whom they are not supposed to be talking to. Uh, 
but communication really is so important if you want to build up a relationship, strengthen the relationship, not leave it where it is. I want to share with you another element also it's important for a happy family life, married life, and that is adjustment. In a relationship, there are two individuals, but your background, your environment, your educational studies, your family, your cultural habits, and therefore, uh, now you, you put together in a family, man and woman, husband and wife, uh, it will not be the same. What you're accustomed to be at home will not be the same when you're after marriage. And therefore, the things are, are different. Needs adjustment. You can't, both cannot say, I want it my way, as I was, uh, as my mother treated me, or as my father treated me. There's got to be adjustment, understanding. There'll be difficulties, mistakes. There's got to be forgiveness. All these elements came in that survey. Adjustment, forgiveness, etc. See and reflect today as we hear from Jesus about the importance of the family, of how much of adjustment you do. Husband and wife, I also think parents and children also, and children and parents also, necessity of communication, necessity of adjustment. And finally, I think one other very important element I've noticed from my experience You've got to keep God in your family. When you were married, you and your spouse, Jesus was present over there as the third party to this bond between you and your spouse. Keep Jesus always in your home. You do that by being conscious of his presence. You do that by having some images of him. But most important, you do that by having some prayer together. Keep prayer in the home. I want to share with you, sisters and brothers all over the world, that I've, I must have dealt with thousands of broken marriages because I was for a long time uh, head of the uh, marriage tribunal, judge of the marriage tribunal, and dealt with literally thousands of... And I want to say, I think with almost 100% accuracy, that I never came across a single broken family where they were praying together. Not a single one, not one. And don't misunderstand. It doesn't mean that because you're not praying, God punishes you and therefore your marriage breaks. No. It's evident when you reflect on it. If you really have deep-rooted difficulties, are sort of misunderstanding that at a deep level, you will not be able to pray together. Prayer deepens the unity. Prayer brings God's blessings. When you pray, brings about a deep spiritual unity. I would think that's an extremely important element in build, bonding up the relationship. Prayer, keeping God present. Today's gospel speaks of how divorce is not allowed, speaks of the importance of children. Reflect on what Jesus said and examine yourselves to see how your communication is, are you able to adjust, and how much is God present in your family. I want to give thanks to God, today's Thanksgiving Day, for all the happinesses you had in your family. We, thank, we give thanks to God for all the good things He gave you and your children, and we pray to God to help you to make your family ever happier and successful. God bless you. My sisters and brothers, we've heard the word of God, received Jesus, 
in the word let's now also respond by saying i believe in god the father almighty creator of heaven and earth and in jesus christ his only son our lord was conceived by the holy spirit born of the virgin mary suffered under pontius pilate was crucified died and was buried he descended into hell on the third day he rose again from the dead he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of god the father almighty from there he will come to judge the living and the dead i believe in the holy spirit the holy catholic church the communion of saints the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body and life everlasting amen my dear sisters and brothers the lord provided adam and eve with the gifts of creation and relationship that they may find fulfillment and give thanks to god the creator as we bring before him our petitions let us come with hearts full of thanksgiving our response is lord hear our prayer all together lord hear our prayer for the holy father pope francis his eminence oswald cardinal gracious all our bishops priests and lay leaders that they may be dedicated to the narrow way helping others navigate through life with right morals we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our prayer. prayer for the government leaders of the world that the principles of the universal destination of goods and preferential option for the poor may be their proclamation and preoccupation we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer for all christians that every eucharist may bring about profound gratitude drawing their gaze away from all distraction fixing their eyes on the lord and being mindful of those who are less fortunate we pray to the lord lord, lord hear our prayer for all married couples that they may experience the joy of love and unity which leads them to respect each other and that they may have the courage to weed out whatever disturbs their relationship we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our, our prayer. prayer we pause to remember our own personal intentions as well as those who have asked us to pray for them we pray to the lord lord, lord hear, hear our prayer lord god you sought to offer us companionship and prosperity that we may be blessed all the days of our life help us to be thankful for your fidelity as we strive to be a blessing to those you've given us make this prayer through christ our lord amen Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. Through your goodness, we have this bread which we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord, God of all creation. To your goodness we have this wine which we offer you, fruit of the wine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Praise 
pray, my brothers and sisters, that your sacrifice and mine may be acceptable to God, our Father in heaven. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the sacrifices instituted by your commands and through the sacred mysteries which we celebrate with dutiful service, graciously complete the sanctifying work by which you are pleased to redeem us. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. Truly really right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God. For we know it belongs to your boundless glory that you come to the aid of mortal beings with your divinity and even fashioned for us a remedy out of mortality itself that the cause of our downfall might become the means of our salvation through Christ our Lord. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty, rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we acclaim. created rightly gives you praise for through your son our Lord Jesus Christ by the power and the working of the Holy Spirit you give life to all things and you make them holy and you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the Sun to its setting a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name therefore O Lord we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate this Eucharist. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you
In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. Giving you thanks, he said the blessing. Gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood. The blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and when we drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. As we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an everlasting offering to you, that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world, be pleased to confirm, to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, your servant, Pope Francis, me, your unworthy servant, order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory. Through Christ our Lord, through me bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence the Father in the words Jesus gave us. Our, Our Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed, hallowed be, thy be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom come. come. Thy, thy will, will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days. In your mercy keep us free from sin, safe from all distress, to wait in joyful hope for the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, at your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but the faith of your Church, and graciously grant us peace and unity, in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer you the sign of peace. Christ, peace be with you. Christ, peace be with you. Lamb of God, you take, take away, away the sins, sins of the world, world. Have, mercy have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the, the, of the world, world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
May this mingling of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ bring eternal life to us who receive it. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not, not worthy, worthy that, that you should, should enter into my, my roof, but only, but only say, say the, the word, word my, soul my soul shall be shall healed. Be healed. We now make our spiritual communion with the Lord. O Lord Jesus, since I cannot now receive you in your sacramental presence, I beg you to come spiritually into my soul, to enrich me with your holy grace, and make me truly your own forever. O Jesus, living in Mary, come and live in me, in the spirit of your holiness, in the fullness of your power, in the communion of your mysteries, in the perfection of your ways. O Divine Guest, give to my soul a strong, lively faith, an unbounded trust, perfect humility, an abiding sorrow for my sins, a total abandonment to your Divine Will, and a perfect loving union with you in mind and heart. O Sacrament Most Holy, O Sacrament Divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. Lord Jesus, thank you for the blessings and graces you have given me through this spiritual communion. Let us pray. Grant us, Almighty God, that we may be refreshed and nourished by the sacrament that we have received, so as to be transformed into what we consume. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May the Lord bless you and keep you. Amen. May God let his face shine upon you and show you his mercy. Amen. May God turn his countenance towards you and give you his peace. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in the peace of Christ. Thanks be to God. Finally, once again, uh, happy Sunday to you, happy Thanksgiving Day, happy Agera, and uh, have a lovely week ahead. We'll see each other, many of you, next Sunday. Got this. Prayer for relief from the coronavirus. Almighty and merciful God, who show your love to all creation everywhere, hear graciously the prayers we make for all those affected by the coronavirus in various parts of the world. We come before you asking for an efficacious control of the outbreak, for a healing of those affected, for the victims and their families. We thank you 
for blessing the efforts of our research scientists working on the development of a vaccine. We pray that these vaccines will be effective in combating the virus and its mutants and in controlling the spread of the pandemic and be available to all. We pray for doctors, nurses and health workers who are in the front line of this battle that they be kept safe and have the strength and courage to continue their heroic efforts. We pray for the government and health authorities that they take appropriate steps for the good of the people. We make this prayer through Christ our Lord. Amen.